Good morning, everybody, and a happy Friday morning to you. I hope everybody's doing well. All right, I just want to let you know before we dive in that while I am covering Royal News today, I am also covering what happened at Harvard. As a Jewish woman, you guys all know I'm Jewish. I just think it's really important to discuss what occurred. So, of course, you can skip over that part if you're not interested in it, but um, I think it's important to cover. So let's get there, shall we? Let's go. We're going to start off this morning with this article that came out. It really gave you fatherly feelings, you know what I'm saying? Because during the coronation, when William, you know, did the whole thing and promised to pledge his life to his country and all of that, and he gave his father a little kiss on the cheek after pledging his loyalty, Charles whispered to his son during the touching moment, thank you, William. I mean, it just gave you those you know, there's that feeling and you know that um, Harry was sitting to the side watching all of this. And I'm sure he was feeling some regret for his behavior during that part, I'm sure. But knowing about all the stress that Harry has put the king through and how William has stood by him, when the king looked up and just said, thank you, William, it literally could bring tears to your eyes. All right, moving on. And sticking with William, the articles are coming out saying William is very guilty and angry after everything that Obed Scobie wrote about her in Endgame. Apparently, he made a promise to Catherine's parents, Carolyn Mike Middleton, to protect and look after her. And all the attacks from Megan and Omid were vicious. And so he feels guilty. I can see that. We're just going to go ahead and dive into the whole Harry Megan thing. And we know that Harry and Meghan are hoping for a fresh start this year, but what they're saying is that Meghan's attempt to make herself over in 2023 totally failed. They're saying that she couldn't land the big fish. They've been very quiet, the two of them, after the Spotify deal went sideways and after Catherine's Together at Christmas Carol concert, which was, you know, her popularity is just soaring through the roof. So you've got, you've got the two of them. Catherine's popularity is going up and Megan's popularity is going down. And they're saying that Megan's hatred of Kate is pure jealousy. I agree. We're going to step away from the Royals. Bear with me. We're going to step away from the Royals for just a minute because I must address what's been all of the news with Harvard University, okay? Here we go. We know that Harvard President Claudine Gay has been forced to step down. There's been a lot of, you know, stuff going around about her. So this was the notice that she put out. And I'm going to summarize this. Basically, the first part of it says, I'm very sorry to have to resign, but after consultation, we've decided it's the best thing for Harvard. She said, I feel very connected to Harvard, and it's very painful that the bonds of trust and reciprocity that should be our sources of strength and support has been, you know, damaged. And it's been distressing to have doubts cast on my commitment to confronting hate. She said she was personally attacked. There's been racial attacks. And, you know, I hope that we can all heal. And, you know, we have a commitment to open inquiry and free expression. Harvard welcomes people of talent and diversity and promise from every background. And, you know, the typical word salad stuff. More word salad. We need to find our common humanity. I hope we can look forward to a brighter day. You know, you can freeze it and read it for yourself. Now, this young lady was brought up for questioning in front of Congress because of her behavior towards the Jewish students. Obviously, she's pro-Palestinian. So just listen to what she had to say to Congress. Harvard University's Claudine Gay has resigned as president after facing mounting criticism over how she responded to anti-Semitism on campus. Here's a little reminder of that. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment? Yes or no? Anti-Semitic rhetoric when it crosses into conduct that amounts to bullying, harassment, intimidation, that is actionable conduct and we do take action. So the answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard code of conduct, correct? 
Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. And with that, people came out all over Twitter. Did anybody tell her that racial animus depends on context? People could not believe she said that. I mean, this Twitter user put it down right. She's leaving because she's frightened to be subject to personal attacks and threats fueled by racial animus? She's a race hustler, just like somebody else we know. And I completely agree with this Twitter user because you should hire the best candidate. It shouldn't rely on the color of their skin. And if you did that, then these types of situations wouldn't happen. She wasn't qualified for the job and she'll go down as the worst Harvard president and the shortest in history. What it comes down to is she failed to denounce anti-Semitism on campus. That is why for a black woman to complain that she's being racially attacked, but she didn't stand up for the Jewish students who were being attacked. So I, I, unbelievable. And now she's been accused of plagiarism. Apparently they found a massive problem with a lot of her papers, including her doctoral thesis. It would appear that this young lady plagiarized like somebody else we know. Uh, that could be really bad. So what people are saying is that she didn't really earn her spot. Turns out she plagiarized her work. Then when she was met with a real crisis on campus, she didn't handle it. So that's why she lost her job and they asked her to step down. But what about the plagiarism? Well, an independent researcher has found over 50 examples of plagiarized passages in her academic work. It's you can't deny it. It's right there in black and white. My question is, why did they go looking for this? And why is this the first time that anybody found it? You, you get where I'm going with this? Why wasn't she checked thoroughly? Why wasn't this all checked thoroughly before she was hired by Harvard? She committed academic fraud if they're able to prove that. I mean, academic fraud, that's terrible. Now this goes to show you just how X and the bot farms work. So X has been flooded with posts, gaslighting the public, saying that this woman's resignation is due to racism, white supremacy, anti-blackness, and a right-wing attack. That's what they're saying. And so critical social justice activists try to enforce universal adoption, trying to convince people that racism and prejudice exists where it doesn't and that you need their special critical insight to see it. So these are some of the uh, posts that are up all over X trying to prove that ideology to you, even though now we know it's a lie. And then you get people like this who put this up. This is a trap. Journalists, I faced this kind of attack before, targeting main high ethical standards, which he doesn't have. And here's what the guy wrote back in response, which I think is priceless. Yes, Jonathan, I must have traveled back in time, plagiarized all of her academic papers, and then implanted a mind control chip in her brain so she equivocated about anti-Semitism in front of Congress. It was all part of my sinister trap. And one of my subscribers pointed out that she really was hired uh, not due to her credentials. And now her PhD is riddled with plagiarism. So nobody at the board of Harvard wanted to say anything. They lost billions in private donations. And that's really why they asked her to leave because billionaires pulled their money. Yep. All right. Time to get back to Harry and Meghan news. Here we go. This is, oh my God. Okay, so they put up this article, Harry has new Hollywood pals, and he was at this football match without Meghan Markle. Yeah, that's why he was actually smiling. He was there with these actors, Glenn Howerton and Rob, whatever his name is. And But here's the thing, this picture was taken last September. Remember last September when they were supposedly out of the country? <laughs> and... Who's to say that he's hanging out with these two? Other people that were there at this football match were Leonardo DiCaprio, Owen Wilson, Selena Gomez. But 
For all we know, he bumped into these people. And so now we've got an article. Oh, they're his good friends. Yeah, I don't think so. Moving now back to Megan and that book that she's supposed to be writing. Apparently, Penguin Random House has learned their lesson after the whole debacle with Harry's book, and they want to see three chapters of her book before they give her any kind of payment. They're trying to see if it's, you know, worthwhile. I got to be honest. I think if it's another slam on the royal family, I think they're not going to publish it. I think people have had enough of their crap. I I can totally see after the money that they lost with Harry why they're asking for this. I'm also sure that part of it also has to do with her work ethic. We all know about that. And after the Spotify deal was canceled and they haven't produced anything for Netflix, I'm pretty sure that, uh, yeah, they want to see what she's doing. Now, people are coming out saying that uh, Meghan Markle's only chance of a career is to be an influencer. And... Um, I don't think that's possible. I'm sorry. Now, one of the things that they brought up was the fact that she was talking about how Archie wants a camera for Christmas, but yet all her husband talks about is how much he hates photographers, you know? Personally, I don't think she can be an influencer, which is why she has never put the TIG up because you have to have commercials for that and she can't get anybody. Now let's get into what I consider to be our big story for today. So this was put up on Twitter by some of the Sussex squad. Now you never know if what they're saying is true, but they're saying don't respond to negative comments because something bad is about to happen. And then this popped up saying that Megan was dropped by the WME talent agency as far as people can tell. The reason they're saying that is because she is nowhere to be found on their official website. There's multiple categories. Under each category, there's something, but she's not there. But then Cameron Walker came out with this article saying that that's not true. She has not been dropped. And the reason he knows is that she is still listed as a speaker on the Harry Walker Agency website. And that website is a division of WNE. And she's listed as an exclusive client. Yet, nobody's hired her to talk. Not one person. You haven't heard about them going to one, one event. They even have a button you can push to hear her speak. And it's her speaking at the One Young World event where, you know, she mentioned herself 55 times in like seven minutes. Yeah. I happen to think it's rather funny that the sugars uh, take this information and they falsify the headlines to try to make her look more desirable. Most requested speakers, humanitarians, and activists. That's not on the website. You know... Supposedly, it was reported by Variety magazine last year that this WME group was going to build Megan's social enterprise and that they were going to try to fix her reputation. And it was understood she had no plans to return to acting. Uh huh. It was also announced or reported that they were going to assume the representation of Archwell Productions. They were also looking into brand partnerships, overall business building plans, media creations. So when articles like this one come out, there's a heated argument over L'Oreal deal rejection. Um, it makes you kind of stop and think, but what's being reported is that's not what it was about. What's being reported is that WME has told Meghan Markle that she must make amends with Charles and the Royals, and she must make amends with her father, and she has to have peace on all fronts or nothing's going to work. She'll never do that. You all should also be very aware that Padina just put up a video. She called WME and asked them if Meghan was still you know, with them. And the woman who answered the phone said no. But then she hung up before she got the rest of the information she needed. So then she called back and she got a different person on the phone. And that person was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. She's still with us. But Padina said the way she said it, she doesn't think that she is. I guess we're going to find out relatively soon. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we all know how sweet Catherine is, but I think even Catherine has a limit. So after the Oprah show and the cut interview and everything that happened, um, I think when Harry and Meghan showed up for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, she'd reached her limit. I didn't think I'd ever see anything like this. She is the queen of the eye roll. Watch this.
it, you guys. Don't forget to leave those comments. I'm reading them. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. If you've already hit the subscribe button, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. Don't forget the links to everything, including my Patreon, are in the description box. If you've donated money to my coffee fund, thank you so much. We will see you Monday morning. Have a great day. Oh,